Hi, I'm so sorry. We're actually closed for the day. What do you mean it's closed? It's only 6 p.m. Um, my apologies, ma'am, but we close at 4 every day. That'll be the first thing to change. Uh -huh. I'm sorry? Oh, nothing. I'm just saying that'll be the first to go when we take over. All moon bucks are open 24-7. Uh, I still don't think I understand. I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. Well, you will soon enough. Where's Ellie? Ellie the owner? No, Ellie the hairstylist. Of course, Ellie the owner. Also, what are you doing? It's so rude to have your sunglasses on while you're talking to someone. Oh, <laughs> my, my apologies, ma'am. I'm, I'm actually blind. E Ellie's already gone home. I'm just here to help her clean and lock up. Oh, this is ridiculous. What kind of cafe is this? First closing at 4 p.m. and then trusting the safety and, and cleanliness of this cafe to a blind person who literally can't see if they're doing a good job or not. Ma'am, I can assure you that I am perfectly able to ensure the safety and cleanliness of this cafe. My disability is in no way detrimental to the business. I might take a little longer than most, but the job gets done. It gets done well. Hey, whatever helps you sleep at night, all right? I'm just saying, if I was running this place, I would want somebody who could see that they were locking up the door and see what cleaning products they were using on my floors. I understand your concern, ma'am, but Ellie, trust me, and we've developed a system together that works really well for labeling and identifying things around the store. I'm grateful for her consideration of my disability and her willingness to learn about it, unlike some people. Hey. Listen, I don't need you to get all snappy with me, all right? I don't need a life lesson here. I'm just trying to meet your boss so that I can close the deal on buying this place. And trust me, there are going to be some big changes around here, starting with the staff, clearly. I can't speak on behalf of Ellie, but I can say that my disability is something that I've navigated and lived through my entire life. I know who I am. And yes, while being blind, may stop me from participating in certain activities or doing things a certain way, I've learned how to put the best version of myself out there. And I appreciate the people in my life who see that. Wow. That was a really moving speech. Are you done? I don't need to listen to your presentations. I'm merely stating the facts. If someone wants their business, to flourish, they need to hire the best of the best. And that is in all aspects of the business, including a glorified janitor like you. I'm getting tired of your attitude. I'm going back and forth with you this. I'm not gonna do it anymore. I'm sorry, but we're closed and please kindly take yourself elsewhere. Thank you. Fine, but I'll be back tomorrow. And I'm planning on doing two things by the end of the day owning a new cafe, and firing someone. You understand me? Good luck with that, ma'am. Oh, great. It's you again. Please, don't tell me you are also a barista here in addition to whatever little cleaning you were doing last night. Good morning, ma'am. Glad to have you back at our cafe. Uh, I am actually. Is there something I can get started for you? Yeah, you can get started on finding whoever else is here to help take my order and make my coffee. Ma'am, I, I assure you, as much as you think it might be, my blindness is not contagious. I know that. I just don't want anyone's fingers in my coffee. I've seen the TikToks. I know how blind people measure how much they're pouring into a cup. Ma'am, that's just one way to do it, usually for when we make drinks for ourselves at home. But here at this cafe, we have all sorts of instruments to help me pour you the most sanitary and tasty cup of coffee you ever had. I promise. Yeah, nice try. I don't trust these methods, or you for that matter. Just get me Ellie so I can get this over with. Well, she's out right now on a quick trip to the bank, but she'll be back shortly. She's not here? I swear, this is the worst run coffee shop I have ever seen. The owner is never around, and there's no staff other than a disabled janitor who thinks he can make coffee. 
Ma'am, I know I can make coffee, and being visually impaired doesn't prevent me from being just as good at it as any other employee would be. I know. I know. You gave me the same speech yesterday. I don't need to hear it again. This whole place is crazy. I would never allow this in my stores. You want to know how I grew Moonbucks to the million dollar franchise it is now? How, ma'am? By hiring people not out of compassion, but out of Skill. I brought on people that I know would not only do a great job, but elevate my company. Quite frankly, you and people like you are only holding a company back. Ma'am, here's the thing. We exist, no matter how much you wish we didn't. And people like me, they're just trying their best to live life and experience life to the fullest. Can't be that full if you're unable to do half of the experiences out there, or see them for that matter. Ma'am, I can participate in all the activities I'm interested in, and, and I can also choose not to participate in the ones that I don't. And frankly, this is becoming one of those situations. I'm just telling you how it is. Figured I should give you a warning, since you'll probably be back on the job market soon. I'm still pretty firm on those two goals I have set for today. And what makes you think Ellie's gonna sell you this cafe? Oh, come on! Look at the state of this place. It's the middle of the day and there are zero customers in here. I can see the signs and it is not looking good. Ellie is looking for financial assistance and I'm here to swoop in and save the day. What Ellie decides to do is completely up to her, but just know if she does decide to sell this cafe to you, it'll be out of necessity and you will be tearing someone away from something they poured their entire heart and soul into. Oh, wait, really? That's crazy because I literally couldn't care less. Bring me water, bottled. Hey, where is Ellie? It's been over 30 minutes of her at the bank. Oh, it might just be a busy day at the bank, ma'am. I'm sure she'll be back soon. Oh, she better be. I am taking away money from her offer by the minute. Also, can you sweep somewhere else, please? I'm afraid you're gonna hit me with that broom. Oh, I'm sorry, but because I can't see the areas I've already swept, I, I really need to stick to my system. What? Yes! You drenched my laptop and the screen went dark! Ma'am, I didn't touch you or the table. I, I would have felt it. Are you seriously arguing with me right now? I could have just lost thousands of files. I'm going to sue you. All right, I've seen enough. What in the world is going on? Oh, he, you must be Ellie. Nothing. I was just telling your employee that he spilled my water. But it's no big deal. What I'm really here for is... Oh, he didn't spill your water. You knocked it over. And furthermore, I heard what you said about suing him. And you didn't even bring a laptop. Okay, clearly we got off on the wrong foot. Listen, Ellie. We don't need to focus on this right now. What we should talk about is the transformation of your cafe. Now, with Moonbucks- Yeah, save it. I saw everything I needed to just now. No matter how desperate I am for money, there is no way I would do business with someone who was ready to lie and exploit, especially with someone who is already in a vulnerable position. Okay, I've seen the conditions of this place. You're sitting on a prime piece of land, but wasting its potential on this mediocre cafe and even more mediocre employees. You're not really in a position to be picky. Yeah, Steve had already informed me of how you mistreated him yesterday and the terrible things you were saying. The way you see the world and people who aren't like you is supportable and frankly, I am appalled that someone with your mindset could be in such a position of power. Hey, I earned my title fair and square. I didn't rely on handouts and accommodations like some people here. Being kind and meeting people where they are in life is what it means to be a good person. The fact that you see it as a weakness is a very telling of your character. I don't care about the opinions of a lady who's about to lose her store and her blind, good-for-nothing employee. Oh, but you should. 
First of all, I went to the bank today to finalize some documents and we got approved for a substantial loan. So, it won't be going anywhere. And furthermore, if there's anyone who's about to lose their job, it's you. <laughs> what do you mean? I have security cameras all over this place. And I have a feeling the board of Moonbunks isn't going to be very appreciative that you were anti-dualistic towards a blind man. You wouldn't dare. If that video gets out, I'm suing you for defamation. Yeah, good luck with that. I've had just about enough of you. Why don't you just get out of here? <gasps> You're gonna regret this! Thanks, Ellie. Thanks for always having my back. Of course. That Karen thinks the world revolves around her. I'm so sorry you had to endure all of that. Well, I appreciate you always sticking up for me, but uh, mostly, I'm just happy the cafe is still going to be here and running. For sure. An exciting new adventure ahead. I can't imagine doing it with anyone else but you. <laughs> now let's go finish this new inventory in the back. Oh, hey Josephine. How you doing? Hey Ross, I'm good. How about yourself? Oh, good. You know, I'll try to keep up the pace. Busy, 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 yeah. but that's how I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I was just here. I just went to the bathroom. Oh, uh, sorry. I didn't realize. Yes, I was right in front of you. Sorry. I... And how about you, miss? Can you move back, please? Um, no, because <laughs> I've been here waiting for the cafe to open for like 10 minutes and you haven't been there like you said. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been right before you got here. I've been here, I promise. Oh. I've been waiting. Yeah, so you say. But anyway, that was an awfully long bathroom break, so I guess you'll just have to wait in line behind me. Good for you, Josephine. Oh, wow. Okay. I see how it is. You two aren't cahoots? <laughs> you can call it whatever you want to. We work together. But if she doesn't want to move, you're just going to have to respect her decision. Fine. Whatever. Just quit lecturing me. Like, get off your soapbox. It's really pathetic. Besides, the only one that needs a morality lecture here is this one right here. What's that mean? Don't worry about it. Don't think too much on it. I don't want you hurting your head. <laughs> Can we just, uh lighten up here a little bit. I'm sure the barista will be here any minute and we can just enjoy our drinks in peace, okay? Uh-huh, and let me guess on those drinks. For you, something soy latte, something beta, wimpy. Oh, and for you, well, they don't have any malt liquor, so that opens it up, huh? What's your problem? Relax. I was just joking. I didn't mean anything by it. Sure you didn't. But I really need to get moving. If this place is not open up soon, I'm never coming back here. I swear. Where's this dumb barista anyways? I'm sure he'll be here in any minute. I mean, technically they still have a minute to open up. Well, knowing the types of people that they usually hire here, I'll give it another hour until they show. What kind of people would that be? You know, people like your friend over here. Lower class, lower IQ. You are way out of line. If you can't keep your comments to yourself, I'm going to be forced Just to... Just relax. <sighs> you people get so emotional about everything. All I'm saying is that judging by your body language, you're not in such a hurry as I am. So, can you just be decent and let me order before you so I don't have to be late to my meeting? Decent? Really? You know, I didn't know you had a meeting to go to. Perhaps if you had asked in a nicer tone, I would have considered it. But no, you were pushy and insulting. As a matter of fact, I also have some work that I need to be getting back to. Really? Doing what? Cleaning, moving boxes, something basic, I'm sure. No, I'm a data analyst for a solar manufacturing company. <laughs> that sounds made up. Oh, no. We told you we work together. He's my boss. Yeah, exactly. And we are darn lucky to have her in the company. I'm sure you need to say that for HR reasons. I get it. No, I'm saying that because it's true. She is one of the best employees in the whole company. 
Good afternoon, everyone. So sorry for the hold up. I was just getting all the brews ready. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. But to be honest, mine was about to run out. You don't have to apologize. I know you have a lot to do all by yourself. Can I just get a medium cafe latte, please? Yeah, thank you for saying that. And can I get a mochaccino with extra syrup, please? Excuse me? You're excused. And can I get an iced water with that? I'll be with you in just a moment, miss, as soon as I'm done helping this customer with her drink. How hard is it to make two drinks at once? It's not brain surgery. I'll try to speed it up as much as I can. Thank you. This place has really gone down a toilet. Really? Why do you say that? Because <laughs> actually the only person being really unreasonable here is you. Pardon me? That's exactly what I said. You've been incredibly rude to everybody around here. It's not okay. And why should I care what you think? Oh, this is gonna be fun. Because, kid, I used to be just like you. I just treated other people as, you know, joke fodder or some kind of an obstacle for me to overcome or literally tread over. Until I started finding out how my behavior was affecting other people's self esteem And, you know, maybe you should take a little introspective look, maybe into whatever mirror you put your makeup on with, because maybe you might find out and discover how your behavior impacts those people around you. Here we go again. We're back with the soapbox, aren't we? <laughs> Seriously. This guy must be brutal to work with. No. I'll take my coffee to go, please. And can we pick it up? You're late and I are just slow. Do you really expect customers to put up with this? No, I don't. There's the exit. Feel free to use it. You're really gonna talk to a customer like that? A paying customer? Yep, you heard me. You can go at any time. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Here's that latte for you, man. Thank you. And there we go. Top coat all evenly applied, and we'll just give it a couple of minutes to dry. We should be ready to add the final design you wanted. You are a lifesaver, Marissa. I could not possibly stand to look at these horrendous cuticles for another second. Blech. Oh, come on, they weren't that bad. Honestly, you did a pretty good job yourself. I'm surprised you even needed my help, to be honest. Well, you know, with this concert coming up, they're doing a live taping of me playing the piano. And I figured there would be some close-up shots of my fingers and that I should, you know, let a professional take care of them before I embarrass myself on national television with my own crude, disgusting attempt at nail art. Well, you know, I'm always glad to help. How's everything been for you this month? Well, you know, it's been hectic with all the preparations, you know, with the show and everything that comes with that. I understand. Many of our customers have been busy lately. It's been a bit slower than usual here at the salon. Really? Tell me the tea, everything. That's so surprising. I always see this place bustling with clients and you guys booked out like weeks in advance. Yeah, we've had a tough time lately. The winter months hit us hard and it's been challenging to recover fully. I've had to let go of a lot of staff and plus some new salons have opened up nearby and they're attracting new customers. Ugh, we hate them. I'm really sorry to hear that, Marissa. You have been my go-to nail technician for years and I would hate to see this place struggle. Ugh. Thank you, Jerry. Your loyalty means a lot to us. We have a wonderful team here and we want to keep providing quality service to our clients, but it's tough for sure. Well, I will get on the Instagram and the TikTok and I will tell everyone about the excellent service that I always receive here. That would mean the world to me. It's customers like you who keep us going during challenging times and I really appreciate all the love and support. Well, I hope more people realize what a gem this place is and of course what a gem you are. That's really sweet, Jerry. And if you ever need anything special for your nails, just let me know. You're a valued friend and client. Hello? Hello? Oh. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry about me. Yeah, you go take care of that. I'll let my nails dry. I'll be fine. Excuse me. Hi. Where's your manager? I need someone to help me fix my nails ASAP. Oh, hi, ma'am. Welcome in. I'm actually the owner of the salon. Can I help you? You're the owner of the salon? Uh, yes. 
ma'am? Is there something the matter? Yes, I just need someone to fix my nails. I, I broke one earlier this morning and I have a big dinner party tonight and where I can't possibly host it with this, this mess of my hands. Please, send one of your nail techs over right away. I understand. I could definitely help you fix that broken nail and do any beautiful design that you have in mind. Um, okay, yeah, um, do you have any other nail techs by, available by any chance? Um, no, it's just me here today. But I assure you, no one does nails better than me. I'm sure I'll be able to take care of anything you need. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> Can't wait any longer, so I guess I'll go with you. Great. Well, just follow me this way, please. Oh, okay. Right this way. All righty. So, what are we having done today? Oh, really? You're gonna try and touch my hands without putting on gloves? What kind of nail professional are you? Oh, I'm sorry. I can definitely put on some gloves, but I can promise you everything in our store is fully sanitized, including my hands. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I'd really like just a little more comfort by you putting on some gloves as a precaution. Right. Okay. Well, here. You know, um, are you sure you're up for this? I want only the best of the best on my nails, and I don't know, you don't really scream professional to me. I promise you, ma'am, I've had over 15 years of experience running a nail salon. I definitely have the skills to help you with whatever it is that you're hoping to do. <laughs> right. See, the thing is, with my experience with certain people, <laughs> they haven't always been pleasant. It's just that some people are so slow, they can't get the job done right. I see. I'm here to make sure you leave with beautiful nails, so if there's anything specific you'd like me to do differently, please just let me know. You know, it's not personal, but some people just don't have the talent for this kind of work. What do you mean by that? I'm not saying. <laughs> just that some people are naturally better at this than others. I'm not sure I get what you're saying, but I do know that I personally have dedicated a lot of my time and energy to developing my talent. I can assure you that if nothing else, I can fix your nails and more. Hey, I'm just sharing my personal observations, that's all. And from what I've seen, there are certain groups of people who just have better mental faculties and are able to produce amazing work. I mean, Look at all the famous works of art in museums. There's a reason why most of those artists have similar backgrounds. I think great work comes from people of all backgrounds and walks of life. It would get pretty boring if we only had one type of art, right? <laughs> That's just something people say to make themselves feel better. But the reality of it is that people are masters of their craft or whatever they got there for a reason. Are you implying that I'm not as good at what I do because of my race? Well, I didn't mean it that way. It sounded exactly that way. My skills have nothing to do with my skin color. I've worked hard to excel in my profession, just like anyone else. <laughs> Look, I didn't come here for a lecture. Just want my nails done, okay? Jeez, I swear. Can't even focus long enough to do some nails? Your type of people are always distracted and just lazy. Okay, now I think you're taking it way too far. Yeah, well, I don't really care what you think, to be honest. You're here to do my nails, and that's it. I came here today because I didn't really have a choice. I don't have time to find a different salon, but trust me, if I did, I wouldn't be here wasting my time with you. Ma'am, listen, I want to help you, but your racist and bigoted way of thinking is very concerning and frankly, I don't know if I want to continue this conversation or session with you. Okay, go ahead. Just give up when there's a little bit of conflict. You know, this is why success is always out of reach for y'all. No, the thing is, I don't owe you anything. The prejudice that you have shown me is 
already awful and I want you out of my salon. Yeah, nice try. I'm the customer and I'm always right. I'm not going anywhere until you do my nails. And actually, you should do them for free after putting me through such an ordeal. What kind of messed up backwards logic is that? Now you want me to work on your nails and you want them for free? Yep. It's called spite, honey. You should look it up. Or maybe if you had some more education, you would know what that was. More education? You are crazy. What are you even talking about? Oh, stop talking back to me and do my nails. She is not going to be doing anything for you. That's right. Excuse me? And who do you think you are? <laughs> I happen to be someone who overheard the awful, despicable, and disgusting things that you were saying to my friend here. And frankly, I am shocked and appalled. You should be ashamed of yourself, lady. Hey, this doesn't involve you, all right? I was just expressing my opinion, and she was the one who started lecturing me. I just want to get my nails done and make sure I get the treatment that I deserve. Oh yeah? Well, the treatment that you deserve is to be removed from this town altogether. Your racist and elitist way of thinking has no place here. Look, Mr. Knight in Shining Armor. I don't know what you do for a living, but unless you're a police officer, you have no right to tell me what I can and cannot do and where I can and cannot be. So just back off. No, no, I will not. I will not back off. See, Marissa is not only an incredible nail artist, she is also an amazing person and my close friend. I will not just sit idly by and watch you berate her. And now I think it is time for you to leave and for you to never come back. See, take your racist self somewhere else to fix your disgusting looking nails. Never in all of my days has someone talked to me with such disrespect. You are a horrible person. Oh, well, I guess today is your lucky day, lady, because now you know what it's like to be yelled at, except you actually deserve it. Now get out. Fine, but I'll have you know that this is a verbal assault. And I will be back with lawyers to sue all of you. Yeah, I am telling you, honey, leave now. It's all right, honey. Thank you. Thanks for not having my back. Anytime. You know you are my best friend. If she ever comes back, you let me know. I will call my boyfriend, the cop, Julio, and we will take care of this. You are so silly. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you for always having my back. Always. Listen, the next time you come in, Manny Petty on the me. But first, let's finish my nails now. Please. I've got let's even go. better on, ideas on. now. You know, I'm so happy that we got here early because all of the overhead compartments are totally filled up now. You know, it's always so hard to find a spot when the flight's fully booked. Are you kidding me? Whose bag is this? Oh, sorry, that's mine. Do you need help finding another spot? Yes, I do. Because of your oversized bag, I have nowhere to put mine. <laughs> okay, well, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but my bag does fit airline requirements. Maybe there's another spot in the back. Oh, so now I have to walk all the way in the back of the plane because you couldn't pack later? Okay, uh, ma'am, we're all just trying to get settled here. Let's not make this a bigger issue than it needs to be. Oh, give me a break. Some people are just inconsiderate. Is there a problem here? Yes. This bag in here? It's taking up all the space. Okay, um, I can help you find the perfect spot for your bag. Thank you. Okay. Problem solved. There shouldn't have been a problem at all. Oh, I understand, ma'am, but we do have a full flight and um, these kind of things happen all the time. Not my issue. Uh, thank you for helping. Sorry for any inconvenience. No problem. My pleasure.
So honey, are you excited for the trip? Yes. I've been waiting for this for months. I can't even remember the last time I've gone on vacation. You have worked so hard on that dissertation. You deserve it. Thanks, babe. <laughs> I'm gonna go use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Cool. Ow! Can you not step on my foot? I didn't step on it, ma'am. I'm just going to the bathroom. Oh, of course. Then I must have just imagined that whole thing. Is that what you're saying? Are you calling me a liar? I'm not saying that. Then what are you saying? Hey, hey, let's just simmer down now, okay? We're, we're trying to have a peaceful flight here. Why don't you control your wife and keep her in line so she doesn't keep causing issues for everyone else on the flight? Excuse me? I know what you did. You probably thought you were being so progressive by marrying her, but now look at all the issues you're suffering with. Ma'am, let's just drop it. Fine with me, but you're the one still talking. Ma'am? We had a really good time working on the last one together. Would you mind turning down the volume or perhaps using headphones? It's a bit loud. I paid for my seat just like you did. I can do whatever I want. I understand, but it's disturbing some of us. We'd appreciate it. You know, it's always people like you who are so loud on flights, talking and laughing without a care for anyone else. And now you're asking me to be quiet? I'm simply just asking for a little courtesy. That's all. I'm not even sure what you're trying to infer right now. You know what? I have an idea. Why don't you just wear headphones to drown out my movie? Ma'am, you are in a public shared space, okay? The point is you need to be considerate of the others around you, okay? So why don't you lower the volume of your movie or put headphones on, it is not that complicated. Uh, okay, Mr. Mansplainer, I don't have headphones and I don't have to listen to anyone like you. Excuse me, is there a problem here again? Yes, there actually is. These two are harassing me for watching a movie. Ma'am, we ask that passengers use headphones when watching or listening to a movie to respect the comfort of everyone on board. Now, um, for a small fee, I have headphones here if you would like to purchase them. Of course you're siding with them. Why am I not surprised? That's what's the problem with the country nowadays. I paid for my ticket, and I bet she stole hers. Are you serious right now? Ma'am, that is totally uncalled for. Uncalled for? I'll tell you what's uncalled for. You two have been causing me trouble since the moment I got here, and I'm sick of it. And I'm sick of the sight of you two. You make me sick. Okay, okay, ma'am. Look, I've heard enough. If you don't settle down, I will have security waiting for us at the gate. <gasps> security? What happened to freedom of speech? I won't say it again. Calm down now, or there will be security waiting for you at the gate. Fine then let me just watch my movie. Ma'am, in order to get back to watching your movie, you will have to purchase headphones. Now, I have a perfect pair right here for you to purchase. Would you like to do that? Ma'am. I'm sorry, what was that? I don't have any money! Because I spent it on this stupid flight. I'll pay for the headphones, ma'am. Really? Yes, it's no problem. Here you go. Thank you. There you go. And here's your headphones. Enjoy your flight. Sorry about the things I said about you earlier. Thanks for getting these for me. It's no problem. Now let's enjoy the rest of the flight.
Finally. Took you long enough. Uh, sorry about that, ma'am. Do you even realize you're exactly five minutes and 42 seconds late? My entire live lunch stream is ruined, thanks to you. My, my apologies, Miss Becky. Uh, the restaurant's kitchen was swamped and, and, and with, with mad orders, and, and then the city traffic was crawling. And believe me, I, I pedal here as fast as I could on my bike, ma'am. Completely ruined, thanks to the likes of you. Do you even understand what that means? My followers expect punctuality. It's a hard job. They were waiting, and I wasn't able to deliver. You should know a thing or two about delivering. I, I truly understand the inconvenience, Miss Becky. Time is precious, I promise. Especially when you have an audience waiting such as yourself. Oh, what a hero. Peddling for the masses. Tell me, does your heroism wear up my food too? <laughs> I, I, I wish it did, Miss Becky. But I, I understand the importance of your live stream. So, um, you know, perhaps there's a way to still make things work for you. Work for me? You want me to go live and pretend that everything's fine? Do you understand that my reputation is at stake here? Maybe your followers would appreciate seeing you adapt to different circumstances. Or maybe you could simply just show the food now. I don't think the audience would know if it was only a few minutes late. You should be able to make it work. Make it work? Are you suggesting that I lie to my followers? Broadcast with cold food? That's not authentic. Authenticity is my whole entire brand. Authenticity is key, ma'am. I, I agree. Um, maybe, may, maybe you could use this as a chance to, to show how you handle little setbacks. Like, life's not always perfect, right? Yeah, well, taking life lessons from a delivery guy, you couldn't even write a two-page book about success. This is about my image, not some feel-good vlog. This isn't rainbows and butterflies. They tune in for glamour and the glitz, not whatever this is. This is just real life problems. And that's something everyone can connect with. Even your followers, Miss Becky. Connect with? My brand is about aspiration, not connection over common mishaps of some dumb delivery man. Do you even know how social media works, Grandpa? Let me guess. You had an ancient Match.com and an eHarmony profile back in the day. <laughs> Ma'am, listen, I really am just trying to help you out. All right, if I could turn back time, I would. I, I just, I'm, I'm working hard for every single dollar that I have, every dollar that I have. My mom, she's in the hospital. You see, she has, she has stage three cancer. And I'm just uh, doing no, what no, I- No, 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 no. Save it for someone who has time for sob stories. I order food, not a confessional. Deliver on that, or just don't even deliver at all. But it's not just drama. It's a true matter of life and death, and every minute I'm standing here delayed is the last minute I get to spend with her. Look, buddy, I don't know who you think you are, but your family isn't my responsibility, okay? My followers are. They expect perfection, and I won't tarnish for anyone's sympathy play. Do you get that? Please. I just ask for a bit of understanding, okay? It's not just a delivery to me. It's a means to support my family. Any help would, would, would be good. I mean, a small tip even would mean the world. All right, us delivery people, we, we barely make enough of my daily wages, so we, we rely on tips. Like I said again, I don't have to worry about your livelihood or your mother's livelihood or whatever I pay for this food, all right? Especially one that was delivered late and is completely ruining my whole entire mood right now. But miss, could you possibly look into your heart and uh, try to see the situation from another perspective? This is more than just the late delivery. It's my mother's life hanging by a thread here. <sighs> well, when compassion gets me millions of likes, maybe I'll consider it. Until then, keep your moralizing to yourself and keep the food hot. Tell your mother I say hi. Jeez. Hi, man. <laughs> hi. Uh, I'm your delivery president, Ernest. Um, I have one express order for Taylor. Yep, that's me. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Hey. I don't mean to be a bother, 
but weren't you the same guy who was delivering to my neighbor a couple days ago? Uh, Becky, oh yeah, yeah, that was me. Wasn't the kindest customer I had that day. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that again. From my point of view, what she did to you and how she treated a service worker such as yourself was simply appalling. To brush you off without a tip after you dashed through rush hour traffic to deliver on time and not only did she not leave you a tip, she badmouthed your mother and your family. It's not decent behavior at all. <laughs> Ms. Taylor, I've seen my fair share of Becky's. Guess that day was just my turn to rotation. Mm, no one should have a turn like that. More often than not, I often ask myself, what happened to empathy, to gratitude? Someone as kind as yourself doesn't deserve to be treated like that. <laughs> hey, I, I wish I knew. Hey, maybe empathy is just on back order. It's delayed, huh? <laughs> Perhaps, but I refuse to let it be a lost art. Not on my watch. We can't control others, but we can set our own standards. Hey, here. Please, take this and use it for your mother. Uh, no, no, I, I can't. I, not this much. I can't please, take this, Ms. Taylor. Please, I, I insist. Even though I was recently let go from my design firm, I can tell that this money will be better off in your hands. That's, jeez, a whole lot of money you're giving me. Um, but really, I, I can't take this from you, especially after you just lost your job. I, I'm sure I can manage. Money comes and goes, Ernest. It's paper. But what it can do, the help that it can provide, that's what's real. I'm Mine's at a loss for words. You, you're such a giving and exceptional person. Your generosity, it's rare. <sighs> I'm not sure I can accept this without feeling... Guilty? Don't. It makes me feel good. Accept it with the intention of paying it forward. That's all the repayment I need. You've got a heart of gold. I'll pay it forward. I promise. There's no way I could have expected this today. Life is funny that way. It hits you with the unexpected. But sometimes it's a good hit, like, like right now. Yeah, a good hit. I'll take it. Remember, we're all facing our own battles. A little kindness might be just the shield someone needs. I will remember that, and I'll be someone's shield one day. Thanks to you. That's a spirit. Now, give your mother my best wishes, and of course, keep the kind soul that you are. It's noticed, and it matters. Duly noted. I'd have to say this exact same thing about you. Oh, and lastly, what my mother always told me, life throws curveballs, but it's not about dodging them, it's about catching them and throwing them back with our own spin. That's a good way to see it. Life's about how we respond, right? Not just what happens to us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We might not control every pitch, but we can choose how to swing. It's our reactions that define us, not just our circumstances. Hmm. I never really looked at it that way. I guess every day is a chance to swing differently, to make a different impact. Precisely. And remember, even a small impact can ripple out in ways we can't even imagine. Your kindness today, for example, it's a ripple. Hmm. A ripple, huh? I like that. Small actions, big waves. <laughs> it's all about the ripples we create. And your ripples, they're good ones. Keep creating them. Thanks, Ms. Taylor. It means a lot. You're welcome. I'll see you around. Hi. Ernest! Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you again! It's great to see you as well. Oh! Here you are. Whoa! I thought I just ordered a snack. What is in here? Open it. Well, you want to come in? <laughs> okay. You look great. How's everything? Oh, fantastic! Nice. 
Have a seat. We are thrilled to offer you the opportunity to join our design team as the lead designer. Is, is this, this isn't real, is it? I, please don't tell me you're playing some sort of cruel joke on me. This is real as it gets, Miss Taylor. My uncle is the head of the firm. All right, after I told him about your generosity, he was eager to meet the person behind the gesture. And he was impressed that you tip me way more than what the food costs. He says a heart like yours is rare and belongs with us. Uh, your uncle wants to offer me a job just like that? Without an interview? He's convinced. He said the interview was in the way you treated me and the kindness you showed without expecting anything in return. I just did what anyone should. And yet, not everyone does. You did, and that's what counts. That's why it's called paying it forward. It's not just about the present, it's about setting emotion into the future of continued kindness. And it's not just the tip, it's the respect you showed. You treated me with dignity, as an equal. Well, we all deserve dignity. I've been there. A little kindness felt like a lifeline. That's the point. You gave me more than a tip that day. You gave me a sense of worth. That's something money can't buy. I'm glad I could do that for you. Thank you, Ernest. I am so grateful for this opportunity. No problem. So, you'll take the job? Yes. Yes, I would love to. Thank you so much. Amazing. Hey, welcome to the team. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, let's eat. Let's oh, eat. yes. I brought enough food for the both of us. Excellent. <laughs> Take a look at this disaster. Hi. <laughs> uh, sorry, how can, how can I assist you? <laughs> Isn't this a hair salon? Y yeah, it is. Sorry, I, I'm just I'm just not quite following. And, and would, you, would you just mind keeping your voice down a little bit? We like to uh, maintain a peaceful environment here. So. Look at my hair! It's a mess! I will not stay peaceful with messy hair. I need it to be fixed immediately. Okay, got it. I, I understand now. Y you know, in my... Honest opinion, your, your hair doesn't actually seem that bad to me. I, I Spare me the flattery. My regular style botched it yesterday with a terrible blowout that looks just so unnatural. Sorry, you, you didn't like your blowout? No, are you listening to me? Hello? Fix it. I have a big fashion gala tonight at the Met, and I need to look impeccable. Uh, understood. Um, sorry about the confusion earlier. Uh, I think we're going to get this sorted out right away. By the way, can I have your name just... Uh, you don't know who I am. I'm Victoria Reed, as in the Victoria Reed, as in if you've ever read a magazine in your life, then you will know who I am. I'm quite renowned in the fashion industry. A absolutely, my apologies. Um, why don't you follow me? I'll introduce you to Eliza, our top stylist here. Took you long enough. Eliza, this is our next client. This is Victoria. Hello, Victoria. Pleasure to meet you. <sighs> yeah, I'll pass. Sorry, is there a problem? Do you perhaps have other stylists available? Well, actually, Eliza's our lead stylist for the afternoon, and I assure you she's the best we have. I can get you started with whatever it is that you're looking for. <sighs> Fine. Let's just... Get this over with. Okay, great. Well, uh, I'll leave you guys to it, and I'll be here if you need anything. Great. Thanks, Liam. Mm -hmm. <sighs> <clears throat> Gosh, 
Would you hurry it up already? Oh, of course. Uh, what can we get? Okay, actually first, do you mind wearing gloves? I'm not comfortable otherwise. Our tools and hands are always sanitized, but sure, I can wear gloves if it comforts you. Your type sure does have a way with germs and spreading them around, don't you? Hmm, okay, I'm not sure what you meant by that, but no problem. Gloves coming on. Thank you, now can we please move this along? If I'm late for the gala, heads will roll. Oh, you're going to the Met Gala tonight. That's so dreamy, and the fashion is always so amazing. It's been a dream of mine to go for a long time. <laughs> Of course it's your dream. It's every woman's dream to attend the Met Gala, but you can't just let anybody in. Then it will lose all of its allure. Maybe one day you can work there as a server or something. I'd really love to model or do some styling there. <laughs> you modeling at the Met Gala? OMG, give me a break. <laughs> I didn't know you were a comedian too. <laughs> That's about the craziest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> A girl can dream, right? Well, to your point, I do believe they're becoming way too inclusive with the guests that they're letting in. I, it seems like they're just trying to appease everyone these days. I personally find it disgusting. But fashion is for everybody, right? It seems to make sense to me that they would like to have all types of people at the event. Of course, you have this typical woke opinion. How original of you. Let's just focus on the hair, shall we? Of course. Okay. Okay, enough of the fluffing. What is going on here? Why can't you people just do a simple job? Why do you have to drag it out? What, you think if you take a longer time, I'm going to tip more? <gasps> Newsflash, I'm not. Uh... You people? What do you mean by you people? <laughs> you know exactly what I mean by you people. I don't want to sugarcoat it anymore. You and all the people like you should go back to where you came from because this country is full. <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? People like you are bad for America. You steal our jobs, work for less. It's completely out of control. And I am sorry if you are jealous of the immense success that I've had, but that's just the way it is, all right? Ma'am, I was born in Pasadena. Are you implying that because I'm a different complexion to you that I don't belong in the United States of America? Why do you have to be so prejudiced? Always playing the victim card, aren't you? <sighs> sorry, what's going on here? Uh, Liam! She's, this woman burned me with the hair dryer. There is no way that she is a professional. I demand compensation. Wait, what? <laughs> Liam, that's a lie. I didn't even touch her with the hair dryer. This woman has been throwing around racist remarks since she got here, and now she's lying, saying I burned her hair. It's ridiculous. That is complete nonsense. You should be grateful I even came in here. Okay, everybody calm down. Eliza, is there any chance you burned her with the hair dryer? Any chance no, at all? No, no, absolutely not. I haven't even used the hair dryer once. I haven't even plugged in any appliances. This is completely ridiculous. Don't listen to her. You know her type. Her people are liars from top to bottom. Okay, okay, ma'am, I've heard enough. I trust Eliza completely. And given your attitude since you walked in here, I'm not surprised by your behavior. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. Are you saying you are going to take her side over mine? Yes, ma'am. How much more do I have to spell it out for you? You're going to regret this. I will ruin your reputation. Yeah, good luck. Well, this store has a ton of security cameras. So in case you want to accuse us of something that we didn't do, I could always put that security footage from today online. Then we'll see who has more damage done to their reputation. You wouldn't do that. Oh, I most certainly would. Now leave our salon. People with your attitude aren't welcome here. The last of me. You'll regret this. I'm so sorry about that, Eliza. You, you don't deserve to be treated like that and have to experience that whole ordeal. I appreciate that, Liam. You know, thank you for always, always having my back. Of course, anytime. Why don't you take a break? I think you deserve it. Yeah, thank you.
I think I'm going to go get a Grand Slam and a cup of coffee. Okay. <laughs> well, enjoy it. Thank you.